All right, guys, this is Jernigam here. Apparently, coronavirus N, a Northern Ireland lockdown and probably Southern Ireland, more than resets of UK. So they can go more than four kilometres. Everything can be more than four people. I mean, the UK stunned the lockdown. We're still on level three at the lockdown. In, is it level four in the lockdown in the UK? Eventually go to level three. But anyway, let's watch this interesting video. You guys may like it and girls. So if you're into this news channel, you'll like this. Not if you're in, not even... If you're into the news channel, you like this anyway. It's always good to do different things and express things about the world. And anyway, I better get into the video. Hold on, I said that. Well, having continued with a stricter lockdown than England, Northern Ireland has now decided to relax its lockdown more than any other part of the UK. From tomorrow, groups of up to six people, not from the same household, will be able to meet outdoors. Drive-in church services and cinemas will also be allowed. Well, Emma Vardy is in Belfast for us. And Emma, this is quite a turnaround. Why the change? Well, look, Northern Ireland has its own scientific advisors who give their bespoke guidance to the devolved government in Belfast. based on the individual situation um, on this island. And ministers here have made their decisions based on that. It isn't immediately clear exactly what is different, but things like less population density, more rural areas uh, may well all be factors. So for people who aren't shielding, who can now go and meet up with other households with social distancing, it is going to feel like quite a change. But Ministers here have still urged caution, saying we're not out of the woods yet. Belfast's been like a ghost town, but it's about to come back to life. People in Northern Ireland are to be allowed more social interaction than anywhere in the UK. From tomorrow, up to six people from different households will be able to meet up outdoors. Far more than in England, where you can only meet one other person from another house. The Northern Ireland executive said it's down to changing scientific advice. It believes there's much less chance of the virus being passed on outdoors. So it will now allow drive through church services, cinemas and concerts, golf and tennis to restart. Much of this ahead of anywhere else in the UK. We are told that outdoor activities are able to be accommodated uh, because the virus doesn't spread uh, as easily uh, outdoors as indoors. Uh, and so we have been told that we will revisit this issue again and we will. It'll be kept under constant review. We do understand that whenever people look to the, the pathway document which we set out were in that first um, phase, we, we had identified that families perhaps could get together. So we understand that people would be um, disappointed. Um, people are desperate to get together. Northern Ireland had been moving more slowly than England in lifting its restrictions. Now that's starting to change, but it's still a balancing act. Leaving things too long could mean an even greater effect on the economy, while political leaders here still worry that moving faster could see the transmission of the virus starting to rise again. There's a nice fish. Anglers arrived here at dawn as fishing lakes and garden centres were also reopened. Take it out today. It's better than a lottery win, and sort of, it's a medicine that you can do without a prescription. <laughs> Once, this might have looked bizarre, but today, for gardeners, it feels like a return to normality. Fabulous. I love walking around garden centres and looking at the plants. And queues formed outside recycling centres. You might have asked the purpose of your trip, please. Across the border in the Republic of Ireland, people are still not allowed to travel more than five kilometres from home. But Northern Ireland has no such limit. Despite today's changes, people both north and south of this island are still urged to be cautious. Northern Ireland is now further ahead than its neighbours, but a second spike in infections could see it all reversed. Emma Vardy, BBC News. Well, that's Northern Ireland, but Scotland will have to wait longer for restrictions to be eased. Our Scotland editor, Sarah Smith, is in Glasgow for us this evening. So no change for some time yet, Sarah? Yeah, the Scottish Government are planning to publish a document, a route map, on Thursday this week, which will outline how they plan to cautiously and gradually ease some lockdown restrictions. But no changes will actually be introduced until the 28th of May at the earliest. So it will be the end of the month before people in Scotland can sit in the park, play a game of golf or tennis, visit a garden centre, or maybe even restart some outdoor work like on construction sites. And the Scottish Government say that like all of the um, UK nations, they base their advice on expert advice that they are given and that it's got nothing to do with politics. But 
it has been obvious that Nicola Sturgeon has enjoyed the opportunity to set her own lockdown rules and not have to follow what's happening in England or other parts of the UK. The gamble is whether or not people will continue to support her taking a different path when they're living under more stringent restrictions than people in other parts of the United Kingdom. Sarah Smith in Glasgow, thank you. Two weeks ago today, some primary school children in England should have finished their first day back at school. But the details of how to make this work are still not certain. An opinion on the way forward amongst both teachers and parents is divided. Research from the Institute for Fiscal Studies said today that children from less well-off households are spending far less time on education activities while at home during lockdown. Our education editor, Brandon Jeffries, has been to one primary school in Leeds. Schools are eerily quiet now. That's meant to change in less than two weeks. England, the first in the UK to ask more children back. Nikita has three kids. Only Willow in year one would be able to return. It's very difficult. Um, I have two of them that really want to learn and I have one that doesn't want to do anything. So it's a, it's a, you're fighting a battle constantly. But her son has dyslexia and she misses the school support. I don't understand the stuff he needs where the lady that works with him in school has that, you know, she knows what he needs and what he doesn't need. Yeah, he's miss her, his school is... Mariola is bringing up two boys on her own. Brian in year six has autism and wants to come back. Is it harder to learn at home? Yeah. It's harder to learn at home. It's, it's easy to walk in school. So normally we have up to 30 children in a class. The head teacher is planning for small groups. That means twice as many classrooms, twice as many teachers. She's already worried what children are missing. Some of our families live in very difficult housing conditions. On top of that, we've got issues like um, access to technology, so whether that's the actual device. So we know some families where siblings are having to share one, one tablet or one mobile phone between multiple siblings. Some children of key workers have been at lessons, but 70 others at the school can't get online creating a bigger gap between them and the better off. Children from richer families are spending around 75 minutes a day more on educational activities than those from the poorest fifth of households. Over the 34 days that children will have been out of school by the 1st of June, that adds up to more than seven days of full-time school. And the longer that children are out of school, the bigger those gaps will grow to be. Families are under pressure, stuck at home with each other, many worrying about money. It's no wonder parents are finding it difficult to get their kids to learn. And even if some go back in June, most children won't be in school until September. That means around 5 million children, just in England, relying on learning at home. Bram and Jeffries, BBC News, Leeds. Well, they didn't mention Wales on that video, but... Uh... I'm sure there's something to do with it. I mean, I think Wales is still in lockdown. Scotland's still in lockdown. Northern Ireland's come out of lockdown before England. I mean, we've got restrictions still in England, but the thing is, Ireland have gone even further. But they were behind us at one time. But anyway, thank you for joining me. Hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.